been there and done that. And now the baddest of the rock gods methodically analyze and dissect musical notes, compositions, and riffs that made them go from the stage to the couch. This is my favorite riff. Here's your host, Nikki Six. Nikki Six here with Zach Wild. It is my favorite riff. What's, What's going, going on, on Madman? Good, Good, Good to see you too. I love your. I love your. Uh, you know, I follow you on Instagram, seeing all your guitars that you've designed and uh, the they're, therapy they're sessions. <laughs> yeah, those kill me. I was hoping for the the horns because oh, yeah, I, well, I wanted to wear the horns. I, well, I had to leave that at the house. Chavi wants to wear it. The little Sabatini, so he'll he'll be wearing that thing. He okay. wears it to school. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's so. amazing. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, we're just like talking about like you know the stuff we grew up on, and stuff that inspired us to start playing. You know, in the beginning, and I was wondering like some of some some of your favorites, like even going back. Like you know, I know you started when you're 15, right? Oh well, yeah, I mean, well, I was 14 years old. Like first year of high school is when I started getting serious. But yeah. uh, but no, I was just um, no, we were talking about it before before we were off camera. It was just uh. You know, when people ask me, they're like, hey, Zach, do you have any advice for my son or daughter? You know, they're going to MI or whatever, you know, and I yeah. go, well, I go, whatever it is you love that yeah. moves you. Like if some kid's just like, oh, I love early Metallica and I, I love paint. I love, Di you know, St. Dime, I love Dimebag and I love, you know, early Metallica. I go, that's what your band should set. You know what I mean? Yeah. You should be able to open for them. Yeah. You know, and I like Meshuggah too or whatever. It's like, well, then that, why? Those are your bands that move yeah. you, yet you're doing this kind of music, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, like we were talking about it before. It's just like, like if we said, you know, with Rich Robinson and the fellas, you know, because Rich, we do those Hendrix experience tours. It's like, if you said to Rich, you go, you listen to the Black Rose, you go, man, you guys, it sounds kind of like humble pie when we're eating that soup. It's like humble pie, yeah. faces, stones. And Father Rich would go, yeah, that's what I'm on a steady diet of. And that's why it sounds like that. because. <laughs> That's what we listen to. Yeah. And that's what we love. And we feel it when we play. Yeah, so that's what it's real. So what yeah. I'm just saying is like like the Stones, like, you know, back in the early days, like, wow, you guys must be into like blues bands and stuff like that. And like Keith would have said, Yeah, I like Chuck Berry and I like it's like, you know, oh, there's some Chuck Berry stuff flying around. It's and then like, and then yeah. you, you grow as a musician yeah, through totally. that. And I mean you, and you pick up new things to put in your soup. But just don't put the wrong thing in the soup. Well, you I mean, can mess that soup up pretty bad. Well without a doubt. I'm just saying like it, you know all the bands that we love, whether it's it's, it's Zeppelin and Sabbath and everything. You know, like how you love early Aerosmith and you know when they, it, all the Aerosmith stuff. So I mean, I'm just saying, where it's just they're just playing. They weren't worried about what's going on in the yep. charts. They're not worried about what's in and what's not because, like we were saying before, if if that's the case, you're always a day late and a dollar short always, anyways. Always, always. Yeah, because we were talking about it before. When guns and you're gonna feel bad about yourself. Yeah, like Guns was the you know when Bon Jovi was the hugest thing at the yeah. Slippery When Wet, and then all of a sudden Guns and Roses, you know, management would have been telling Guns and Roses, you guys need to be more like Bon Jovi. Yeah. And they're already doing their thing, and it's just like. But you're never going to make it unless you start doing Bon Jovi kind of stuff. Right. And then all of a sudden, Guns does their thing, and the next thing you know, you have Soundgarden and Alice and all the guys. You guys need to sound like Guns N' Roses. They're like, no, and exactly. that's not what we do. And then when the grunge thing is huge, they're telling yeah. all the Green Day guys, yeah. you need to be more like the grunge guys. And, yeah. then, and it's just like, so there's always this movement going on yeah. for a while before it ever hits anyways. Yeah. So that means, so if you're catching up with it when it's already big, yeah. when you're it's already a, here, yeah, already If you're looking at the billboard charts show. and you're going, hey, these are the top, Zach, these are the top 10 bands right now. Let's start a band and sound like this. It's, By the time we put it and together- And there are people that do that, And man. you'll be like, that's that's not in anymore. You need to sound like this over here. You're like, no, but we've spent all this time trying to sound like this. Can't do that. No. I mean, I, the bands that I love, the, I mean, I, I think about Aerosmith, I don't know if they have ever done a bad album because they always sound like Aerosmith. There might be a few songs here and there. All artists have those, but in general, I think like like the Aussies from Black Sabbath on. I mean, it's just that's because he's doing. When you're with him, you're doing what it is you love. Yeah, what what, what we like doing. I mean, it's just yeah. you don't worry about what other bands are doing or what anybody else is doing for that matter. I mean, you might check, you know, might you know hear it and go, oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, but sure. It's just like that doesn't make it doesn't make it bad because you don't want to sound like it. You know, it just means it's not 
it's not meant for you. Yeah. But that's good advice. Exactly. For I mean, players. you know, yeah, just whatever it is that you like is what you should be doing, man. I mean, it really is the truth. You know, so, I mean, because like you said, if that was the case with Zeppelin and Sabbath and everything like that, when that whole blues explosion started with Cream yeah. and everything like that, and John Mayo and then Cream and everything like that, it's just like, it would have been telling, you know, Eric Clapton and Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker when they had like White Room or Sunshine yeah. and Love and then going, yeah, but you need to sound more like the Beatles. Yeah. And it's like, where's the where's the choruses and where's the, you know, the poppy hooks? Mm -hmm. And they go, yeah, but we're not the Beatles, man. You know, yeah. we're like, you need to be more like Yeah, we've, we've all had those conversations with record companies. I, I told you when uh, Sylvia Roan, head of Electra, said, um, you know, to Motley Crue, that listen, I think it'd be like really good right now. I'll turn this in. You guys, like cut your yeah. hair. I was yeah, like, I, mean, I was like, wait a minute, we're at this big conference table, and you're talking about my hair. Um, that was just. Weird. And, I, and, and listen, but I, I understand. I too. get it. I get, I get it, it because they're the way they're looking at it is an investment, and they're just like, we want to get yeah. the most out of our investment and everything yeah. like that. It's a business, and I and I, I get it. Yeah. But I mean, really, when you really look at, you know, we manage Salvador Dali, and he's our guy. And he, we're getting ready for the next art exhibit, you know. And, and I'm like, Nick, did you go down and see what Sal got? And you're like, if he's doing I soup go, cans. He, he's yeah, doing soup cans. Yeah, exactly. Like the like. Uh, Let's say if the Andy Warhol World. stuff never existed, and he's yeah. got the soup cans. It's all soup and he's cans. Like, we're like, what happened to our guy? Yeah, and it's just like he's, he's <laughs> like, no, it's like there's another melting clock. Is there another one with Jesus on the crucifix? And you go, no, there's none of that, man. And I go, but the whole thing is, all we can do is just let him be him. Yeah. And and hopefully you know and who knew that the soup can thing would be huge yeah. you know what I mean it's just like we didn't we didn't think so but yeah everyone loves it <laughs> so, so so I I know you know y you I mean as a friend as a you know fellow musician and and I know what you've grown up on you know we've talked about it and I, I see it you know coming out the way you play and the songs you write and stuff um, was there any periods like where you started with this and then you dipped your toe in here to learn, like uh, say blues and then you learn more about jazz and you learn more about funk or like as a guitar player, what was your yeah, path I, as, I as learning? Without a doubt, I mean, it never, the learning thing never ends, ever. So, I mean, I'm just saying, uh, but yeah, I, I just always think it's great anyway. I mean, you know, the whole thing is like when I first started with the boss, it was just I was playing classical guitar at the time because, you know, because of Randy and stuff like that, because mm -hmm. of St. Rhodes and then uh, it was just, um, then when I got the gig with the boss, it was just like, well, I mean, it's already bad enough. I got the Les Paul and I got blonde hair. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I'm not doing a classical thing. I, you know, because then it, that's that's what Randy's sure. whole thing was. So at the home, I remember seeing a classical, I mean, a country video with Albert Lee playing, and just the sound of like flat pickers and just, it, and not only that, the chicken picking and everything like that. It just the sound of it. And just the whole technique looked so interesting, and I and I was just like, wow! I was just like, I just bought the videotape and just started copping the licks mm -hmm. of the Albert Lee thing. So, you like like you said, if it's something that moves you and you want to learn it, yeah, then you can learn it. But we were just talking about that before when you know, me and some of my other buddies, like we were talking about like with blues or anything like that, uh, like Jared James Nichols and Tyler Bryant. You know, they came out with us mm -hmm. on, on and they're they're young guys mm -hmm. and they love blues and everything like that. Yeah. Which is, which is awesome because they're younger cats and mm -hmm. they love blues and they love blues players. But yeah. I mean, the whole thing is uh, it's a I great mean, place it, to jump off of. Without a doubt, but I mean, it's it's in them. They 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 consume it and it's in their DNA. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but the whole thing is, you can introduce music, you know, to a kid, and if he doesn't like it, you can't force someone to like it. I mean, you know, because some kid might go here, just learn. Here's a Hendrix thing or a Stevie Ray Vaughan thing or a Robin Trower thing yeah. or Frank Marino or whatever. Yeah. And, and he'll go, yeah, but I like the Sex Pistols and yeah. I like the Clash. Or, or I want to be like Jack Johnson. Then exactly. Then be, be that. But that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. you, I mean, you can't, it's it's cool to learn something. I mean, you know, like with, uh, I remember reading this article on Johnny Winter and Johnny said, no, I, I love, I completely respect classical musicians and classical guitar players. They're phenomenal. I mean, it's ridiculous how amazing they are. He goes, but the only thing that moves me is that, you know, that gives me chills is, is blues. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, why, so he's not going to hear it. Yeah. And, and, and so he's just like, well, why am I going to spend eight hours, 12 hours a day learning classical guitar if it doesn't do anything to me? You right. know what I mean? Like, right. well, I, I can understand. And, you know, he was saying I can understand incorporating it or yeah. learning something new and everything. He just goes, but I no, no. 
I'd rather learn jazz or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, or something yeah. that's similar to blue, you know, I yeah. mean, in the same zip code or yeah. whatever. But, but that's that's good advice for people that are, you know, watching, you know, wanting to, you know, understand direction. I think it's important. It's a simple concept for us. I mean, I before Motley Crue, I was doing kind of punk rock, glam, you know, messed up lyrics. And so Motley Crue is just the, the right band to be the vehicle to do it. Um, I don't really find myself interested in being anything else. So I'm, I'm comfortable. I know you say, yeah, like I'm if, comfortable. Like when yeah. I play a guitar at home and I'm writing songs, it's like, oh, this is kind of T Rexy. That feels like it. Home yeah, but for that's me. because you grew up T Rex. On it. Yeah, and that's love it's music it. you love and music you that's in your DNA. Yeah. So that's what's going to come out of you. Like yeah. we were talking about, with, you know, with the Black Crows. I mean, it's not, yeah. it's like, Nick, are you tasting any Sabbath in that soup? You're like, no, nah, really, I'm not tasting any Sabbath at yeah. all in this soup. It's just like, Zach, there's a lot of stones and humble pie in here, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but, <laughs> I'm just saying. I feel like we need to do, like, a soup tasting thing for young musicians. No. Well, you can taste we'll them, up. and you can taste them all, you and know we'll, what I mean? We'll put on this side over here, we'll put what it is. It's like, this is, uh, I don't know, this is Backstreet Boys soup. It There's Sabbath soup right next you could, to you'd it. You'd be tasting a bunch of Michael Jackson and Michael. good stuff in there, like The Weeknd. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like, if you, I remember, and you you're going to go there, and you're going to go, this guy's this guy. Look at this guy. He's like, he's a meathead. He's long hair. He's going to pick the Sabbath soup. He picks the Backstreet Boys soup. You're like, okay. Exactly. You, who knew? Who knew? You never knew. <laughs> and you might have a little Backstreet in you. <laughs> Wait, who, I, who knew? <laughs> who knew? Hey, uh, it would but, be nice doing five nights at the Rose Bowl. That, that wouldn't yeah. suck, would it? <laughs> hey, um, give me give me a couple of your like favorite you know riffs. Well, I mean, obviously, when you're learning, you, you know, you don't know chords or anything like that. But I remember, uh, you know, obviously, the first ones would have to be. Because you can play with one thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, or... <laughs> you know, you know, that's, that's another one that I remember my one buddy, we had an acoustic, but then it was... <laughs> and we were like, dude, that's amazing. Because <laughs> you could actually play it. Right, you know? right. But I mean, uh, no, I mean, obviously, it would just be your favorite bands you know, and riffs and songs like that, but I remember, I remember, you know, like, as far as breakthroughs go, I remember my uh, guitar teacher literally right, showed me, uh, Back in Black. Yeah. I could play the chords, but I right. couldn't, but the, you yeah. know, the lick, uh -huh. that was like a major breakthrough when I learned that. Yeah. But I mean, you know, but, and then when, you know, when he was actually showing me scales. Right. And, and it was like, you know, where you go, oh, wow. So, this you know, connects here. Exactly. Like, yeah. You know, like an engine, car engine, it, it's like all the p parts look bizarre. You know, the transmission, the engine, because it's all scattered all over the place. But, you know, once they start showing you, well, this connects to this and this connects yeah. to that. Yeah. And then you go, oh. So, you know, yeah. that's why any of our buddies that are mechanics, I mean, obviously they'll listen to, they'll, they can even just listen to the car and tell you what's the matter with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just like even with, you know, because then eventually, because you know your scales and you know anything like that, like even just by hearing it you can tell how it's being played yeah that was a breakthrough you know I mean? for me when i didn't have to look at my instrument and wherever i was i i basically knew where i was yeah. sonically i was like oh that's an e oh that's a d i did that as well i just why i kept everything in e <laughs> every, every song in e most motley is a <laughs> well then this way you'll know where you're at <laughs> just, <laughs> it's an open string we're good we can't make a mistake <laughs> or, oh yeah we can. go to f sharp or g it's like no nah, i don't know what that is we'll just keep it in a <laughs> How are you? What, well, look at look at look at Pontiff Keith. He's only got five strings on the guitar yeah, at this point. Right? He's like, I really don't need the six. Like, I don't need is, it. No, this is getting confusing. I mean, why do I, I think, need this I thing? I think he had a telly made that only is a five stringer. But well, now it's just five. It's That's five. good. You know, it's I mean, a five stringer. Oh, that truly is. Less what was that, is what was that band? Uh, was it Disneyland After Dark? I think the bass player had two strings. Two, I think. Yeah, and, and then thought, you got the presence of the United States. Uh, that guy had. Did he have one? I think he might have had one. And man. I just I remember going. I'm gonna, do we need two? Okay. I can do this with one. I can do it with one too. <laughs> I can do it with none. With Pro Tools. <laughs> just go up there with nothing on the. Just nothing. But look badass. 
and just, do all the moves. And so, somebody in the front row is going, there are no strings on Zach's guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and then actually the guitar is just elevating. They go, man, he must really be practicing. Man, well, <laughs> you're just shredding <laughs> solos coming out everywhere. <laughs> in the meantime, you're having a cup of Odin Force blend. <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. Oh my god. So, um, like, give me a couple of your, like, your, your hardest riffs, let's say. Uh, actually, none of them are really hard. For you, you, they're not. If you showed no, it to me, I couldn't play but, it. But the whole thing is this. I mean, when you real realize, uh, I, we'll put it this way. I remember, uh, you know, or like with Rush, I don't know yeah. what guitar teacher Lee was, you know, yeah. you know, with the spirit of the radio. Yeah. I remember, <laughs> I remember playing it for one of my buddies. He goes, what do you, but like, obviously you always learn it harder than it was originally written. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it's all, and then, you know, because I couldn't hear the open strings or anything like that. Uh, till you know, you actually see Alex Lifeson, you know. <laughs> the, the like I've been playing the it the hard chords. way. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I've been playing it wrong all this time, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, but I always, you know, when I, when I was teaching guitar, I remember uh, kids would, you know, come to me and if they wanted to learn something, they'd always be playing it 10 times harder. Yeah. Than the way, no, I go, no. And I remember even my guitar teacher, Leroy, he goes, no, he wouldn't do it that way, man. Yeah. You know, he goes, always, I mean, you learn it the harder way, but you know, the, the, the older you get, I mean, like, and not only that, why would you make it harder on yourself anyways? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, so, I remember so many times in rehearsal, they work on something, like Mick would go, it's easier to play it right here. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You're trying Making to come it, up with all these stretching. Stretches. You know, and a bass stretch is like it's like two guitars. Slight, yeah, it's slightly huger, man. I need finger extensions. <laughs> it's just like, what are you doing? It's like I'm training for the tour, the new record. Yeah, I'm training, man. Like, what are you doing, man? No, That's totally. So true. No, it's just it really is. No, I mean, as far as riffs go and everything like that. Uh, I mean, just, you know, with Sabbath and everything like that. And then, you know, obviously... I can't help but when I'm playing guitar, add those half steps in, in my riffs. It's like, I just, every time, I'll be playing, you know... what? Yeah, or like, you know, even, like, even to those, you know, you didn't eat and you know, you know, you know, Oh, yeah. Yeah, all that stuff. I don't know yeah. why. But out of that, well, because you like the sound of it. Yeah, like, so, yeah, it's pretty without simple. See? No, told, but like you said, less is more. And then, yeah. you know, I mean, as far as riffs go and everything like that, it's just, uh, yeah. I, you know, and even when I'm, you know, coming up with riffs, I mean, with Black Label or anything like that, it just, just, it almost like you just write it, if you don't write it on a, you know, because riffs on a bass. Yeah. You know what I'm just saying? Either just pick up a bass and try and write riffs on, yeah. on a... It's a great thing to write yeah, riffs on. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, because it simplifies it. Yeah, you don't have really much to work with. I yeah. mean, if you only have X amount of crayons, mm -hmm. you're going to have to come up with something. You know, it's just like, oh, how'd you come up with that pink crayon? You know what I mean? You, you, you go, well, I took red and mix it with the white over here. Because I was like, I'm so impressed I, you that you know, know that you could mix crayon colors to get pink. Well, well there, I got four <laughs> Bambinos. What are you talking about? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, I'm used to crayons, but I mean... No, but it's the truth. If you only have X amount of things to work with, then you really have to use your imagination. Mm -hmm. You know, if I only gave you two strings and I'm yeah. like, Nicky, write a whole Motley album yeah. with these two strings. That'd be awesome. No, but I mean, but the whole thing is you do it. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? It's a, you know, you'd be like, dun 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 There's one. Then you got dun 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 It's on the one string. There we go. You know what I mean? Then you go dun 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 And it's, yeah, you got two strings for that one, you know? So, I mean. We got live wire. That's just A. It's just a C and a D. That's easy. That's what I'm saying. But, I mean, it's just like, just have as minimal. Yeah. Amounts of things, you know, like Iron Man, you know, down, 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 yeah. it's on an E string or smoke on the water. Yeah. You know what kills me about those kind of riffs? I hear it and I go, damn it. Why didn't I write that? Because it's, they did. Damn <laughs> it. Yeah, but then you got, then you got Dr. Feelgood, man. I know. And that, that one's, uh, people seem to enjoy that one a lot too. Yes, yeah, so. I like that one. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> but, you know, the guitar, like literally, you can just take. It slightly and change Iron Man, and you have something totally new. And it's just, it's, 
it's so interesting to me. I'm like, those exact notes of whatever song it is, it's, no, like, totally. it's just like the universe lined up. I feel like that. It's like, wow, because it's so simple, but it connects with so many people. No, without a doubt. I mean, you know, like you said, uh, Zeppelin. I mean, Zeppelin, Jesus. Walk This Way. I mean, you yeah. know, with, with Aerosmith and everything like that. I mean, it's, I mean, it, and like you said, they're all riffs. Yeah. It's all riff driven music. I mean, yeah. as opposed to just a power chord. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, what's your what's your like? Because I was watching you do. I think it was morning scales. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I pumped some of them out this morning. You know, I just. But know, it inspired me. So I started doing that. That's a great idea. Well, yeah. I mean, just every morning, just you know, go over them like you're doing push-ups and sit-ups. But I mean, uh, but yeah. I mean, like we were talking about with riffs, though. I mean, like even when we did uh, a stillborn, I mean, the boss was coming down here. Uh, that's just one riff, you know. Just... That's it, man. Yeah. You know, what I mean, and so. But once the band starts playing yeah, behind it, it sounds slamming. Yeah, slamming. Yeah, slamming. You know, so. Uh, no, that's the whole thing. I mean, it's just coming up with, and like you said, let's see what you can do with one note. Yeah. You know, just and like you said, you just put different rhythms upon it. Mm -hmm. Then you got a whole different riff. Yeah. You, know? you practice to metronome. Well, look at you got down on that, down on that, down on that. Yeah. Then you got dun 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 dun. It's one note. Yeah. So I mean, you know, like you said, you just give somebody one note and just go, just bend it, shape it, and twist it any way you want. Yeah. And then you'll have a new song. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's really good advice for musicians just to hear that and just say, don't make it such a big deal. No, oh, totally. Just, and that's why, I mean, like, you know, even with Zeppelin, down, 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 two strings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, here, Nick, let's see what you can do with two strings. You yeah. know, exactly. Check this out. I got this rip. Down, 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 down. It's like, oh, that's great. So what else is going on with you? Tell me about um, your guitars. Well, we got the, yeah, the, the guitar company along with, um, you know, with my dishwashers and laundry services I have available. Uh, since the day I auditioned with the boss, and to this day, that's what I still do. But uh, no, we we I started my own company, so I got the the guitars. I'm starting on amps now. Nice. That'll, that'll be next, and then uh, I'm gonna do everything, strings, everything. You having a good time with it? I can Without tell. Without a doubt. I mean, it's just great because, guitars too. Well, you're your own thanks, brother. I mean, yeah, the guys do. The gang does an amazing job with them. So, you know, because somebody was like, "Well, how do you end up doing?" It? I go, "Well, my buddies that make guitars." You know, like, Nick, you, you build guitars. I mean, I'm like, Nick, can we make the neck more like this or make it a bit thinner? You're like, yeah, yeah Zach, just give me that thing. I'll just take me about a half an hour. Yeah. You know, and then you just make it. And I'm like, this is perfect. This is great. We we'll just yeah. make them all like this. Yeah. Are you a collector at all? Do you have any, any Yeah, I mean, with all my old Gibsons. I mean, even, even when I was, you know, all those years, you know, and I'm still buddies with everybody over at Gibson and yeah. everything like that. So, uh, I mean, that's where I came from. And it's my family, and I got, mm -hmm. I still got friends over there. So, uh, but the whole thing is, um, yeah, I'd, I'd have some old ones and stuff like that. I remember Ozzy got me, uh, you know, he, got me a, he got me a 57 Junior because, you know, when Mountain, nice. Sabbath opened up for Mountain. Yeah. And he was just like, Zach, Leslie, Leslie was he had the, the most hugest guitar tone. He, he just remembered it, you know, being with Sabbath. Those so, P90s. Yeah. And, you know, so he, I remember he got me that for like my 20th birthday or something like that. I still have it. So, you know, yeah. I used it for all the clean stuff. I used it, it was on a, the TV records. yellow or a he got me the yellow guy. Yeah. So yeah. you know with the uh, the tobacco sunburst. So um, not the TV yellow, the tobacco sunburst. Yeah. Guy. But um, such a great sounding guitar. But no, and yeah. we talk about that. That's the same thing with that. The simplicity of it. Yeah. I mean, there's not even binding on that guitar. You know what I mean? So yeah, I it's know, just it's a true. plank of wood. And plank just of wood. A P90. strings. Yeah, and a P90. And it sounds phenomenal. Do you use your uh, both pickups? Do you use your neck pickup yeah. a lot? Yeah, I, I got uh, our buddy uh, Jared James Nichols. He always ended up taking out the the front pickup. He just yeah. uses the back all the time. But to me, it, that's just another crayon you could have. So why would mm -hmm. you want to get rid of it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've heard both. Some people are like I never use it, so I took it out. Well, I he, use he, it. Well, even King Edward, right? He only had the back pickup. And just one knob. Yeah. He didn't even have the tone knob. Yeah. He was just like, this cuts into drinking. I mean, you know, what do I want to have another knob for? I mean, you know, I just like, I only got one knob. I just turn it on and that's it. Yeah. I want to clean. I just yeah. turn it down. So. How how much of an influence was Eddie on you? I think on everybody. I mean, you know, you had. He really changed the game. Well, I mean, put it this way, uh, Pontiff Sheehan. I mean, you know, Billy, he, but he even said it. He goes, you know, when you've really changed the game. 
when you've you've influenced people, not only that want to sound, you know, that that end up copying your thing or mm -hmm. sound like you were, mm -hmm. but that go intentionally out of the way not to sound like you. So that's you really influence people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. So it's just like, you know, you don't want to sound like King Edward or anything like that. Get then don't don't tap. You know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. I remember when I, with Oz, when I first got in the band, it was like, well, how am I going to be me? You know, and I go, oh, I won't play with a whammy bar. Because, you know what I mean? Because that's, I'll get rid of that. All right, and you don't use no a whammy at all? Them, this, no, well, I, I have them now. Yeah. But, you know, I intentionally went out yeah. of my way when no I tapping. first joined the band. No tapping, no whammy bar, no, di no diatonic scales or harmonic minor, you know, three notes of scale, mm -hmm. which at that time, you know, I'm Al Demiola, you know, Ponte Val was huge on me. So, I mean, but at that time I was just like, yeah, but that's what, I mean, at the time, Ingve was, mm -hmm. you know, at that time, everybody was, they, I mean, they opened up, you know, uh, Father Sherini and JD were saying they even opened up a ward at Berkeley just on all these classical Capris and all this other stuff, yeah. because, solely because of Ingve. Yeah. So you know what I mean. That's how huge, in, you know, yeah. how much Ingve changed. But I, I like how you're like going. I'm gonna be with you know one of my heroes. I'm gonna be in this band and I'm gonna carve new territory. And these are things I can't do. Well, yeah. Somebody I, else I mean, already this did way it. you won't sound like that yeah. if you don't do it. You know what I mean? So it's just like, all right. So, um, you know, I mean, like when GNR is the biggest thing at the time. I mean, you know, if you don't want to be like Slash get a flying v or an yeah. sg yeah you, you know what i mean just do the opposite of him yeah you know or get a strat I, i'm just saying yeah you know what i mean you don't want to sound like Jimi hendrix don't play a stratocaster yeah. get a les paul you know what i mean or get a yeah. flying v it, yeah. it's something that's complete opposite of him get a guitar that doesn't have a whammy on it yeah don't use a univide pedal you, you know what i mean i'm just saying if yeah. you, you just cross things off the You're list a wah pedal guy right yeah I, I, I effects are great i mean i, I love like you said i mean uh, I got the Rota vibe, you know, with Robin Trow. I love Robin Trow. I Trow, love Hendrix. Okay. I love he doesn't Frank get enough, Marino. enough credit. So, yeah, I mean, it just, but, uh, you know, I mean, you know, getting back to when I first joined the boss, I mean, it was just, I just crossed off all these things, and the only thing I was kind of left with was pentatonic scales. Mm -hmm. You know, and I love uh, John McLaughlin. It's huge on me, too. So, I mean, and he's the king of it. So, I mean, as far as, you know, blazing pentatonic scales and picking them all and everything like that, and then you got... Uh, and Frank Marino's huge on me. Yeah, Frank so, Marino. I uh, saw him play when I was a teenager. It was uh, Frank Marino, Rush, Montrose, and Sabbath in Seattle. Wow. Yeah. That's that was like a whole bunch of game changers that right was, there. Yeah, that was yeah, a, that was a mind blowing night. Without for me. a doubt, man. Just sitting there as a kid going. Okay, well, that's a good enough excuse to go. This is what I want to do with my this life. That's what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> it was that and waiting in line to see. Uh, it was Queen, Kansas, and Rush at the Paramount Theater in wow. Seattle. That was like a mind blower. But I've got a bunch of guys that can definitely play their instruments. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean, Kansas, not my favorite band, but the talented. Oh yeah, without a doubt. What, you know, without vocals. Amazing, the vocals, the, the songwriting. Yeah. I mean, everything. They're just phenomenal. But uh, but there are those moments like you, you think about like the live performance and like us going to concerts or putting on that record and going, this is what I want to do. Oh yeah. Like well, there was no, there was no like, well, this is what I want to do for a while. And then I'll get a job. It was like there's well, no. I mean, that's you, you know, that's why I, I always tell kids too. I mean, well, you know, I mean, you still got your friends that when you were playing the Sunset Strip back in the day and before Motley was this just gigantic thing. It was just like I'm sure you still got some of your buddies that are just like, yeah, we still got the band, we got the wedding band, or you know, Nick, or, and they're having know. fun. No, but I'm saying they're lifers. Is lifers. what I'm just saying is they still make a living yeah. playing music. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm saying that's when when. I mean, you know, yeah, of course, everybody, yeah, any of your friends, you know, it's just like, oh, we want to be as big as Motley Crue and everything like that. It's just like, yeah, but on the way to being as huge as Motley Crue, as long as you're still playing music. It can't day. be the goal, though. It can't be, I'm doing this to get massive and get money and get chicks. That's great. But, yep, it's all about this. It's all about this. Well, you and gotta, wherever yeah, you, you end up on the path is, like, you got to be grateful for that. I mean, you're... You know, you've been doing this forever. You played every arena and stadium. And well, I mean, I actually did get into it for the reason to be the be chicks? super wealthy okay. chicks, yeah, and um and everything like that. And I and, and I live in a van down by the river. Right and now, you do with Barbara Ann for the last for since for thirty three years now. Yeah, 
I have to pay her off to tell her. Yeah. You know, Can to I give hang her an award? Me. So it, didn't, it hasn't worked out at all. Has she got an award yet? <laughs> yes. No, she's already a patron saint in the Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> They've already awarded it to her. Well. I feel like, like at the <laughs> Grammys every year, she should get like an award. Like a, every year, people are like, who is that? It's Zach's wife. You know, she's a lifer. <laughs> it pays well, though. That's another reason why I don't have any money. So, you know what I mean? So, all my. Whatever it is I am making between mowing lawns and cleaning driveways and shoveling snow, I just give it all to her anyway. So, so that, that's what I do. <laughs> give it to the wife. Um, I, I had this this moment <clears throat> probably in my late twenties, maybe early thirties, where like I'd been doing it and loving it and playing and winning at it, and all of a sudden one day I was like, "This is." This is it. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I don't know why I didn't have that revelation earlier. Like, I knew that's what I wanted to yeah. do. But there was that moment when I went, I will always be doing this. No. Until I'm old. And I love well, seeing yeah, I mean, guys that way. are old that are still doing it. Me and JD just always talk about it. You know, because I've known JD since we were like 17 or 18 years old, right? And then, uh, but like, if I wasn't blessed with having Ozzy in my life and then us having our black label family and everything mm -hmm. like that. Like me and JD would either we'd be teaching, we'd be we'd have a wedding band, we'd have our cover band. I'd love to see that wedding band. But it, it would be well, JD could definitely handle all the Jim Morrison stuff and the Lou Rawls and everything because he's got the low voice. So I mean, no, we we pick out who can sing like whoever, you know what I mean? But the whole thing is, we wouldn't. That's what we would be doing, yeah. making a living. Yeah. I, I, Whatever that living is, and I think no, that's an important you'd be, message. You'd still be playing, and I mean that, that's what we were talking about, like. I mean, it's sad in one in one aspect because I'm sure you got buddies that you were like, Zach. I remember this day back in the day when you know when King Edward and Saint Rose and all the guys they were the cats rolling around here, yeah. just like how you had Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck and Eric Clapton in England. Yeah. Here we are, ten years later, and it was Eddie and Randy and yeah. George Lynch and all the all the guys yeah. over here in L.A. Yeah. So it was just like, but how many amazing guitar players, drummers, and bass players, singers? Didn't that make didn't it. do anything. Yeah. No, or, they, or just you run into them now, yeah. and you go, Frank, how come? Did you get? It's like, nah, I still got one guitar. Me and Tommy, every now and then we get together and jam or whatever. It's mm -hmm. just like, wow. And you're you're like Zach, that dude moves to be the most badass guitar player, right, right, ever. Yeah. And I was like, wow. And it, you know, I mean, just and doesn't do it anymore. Well, that's why I was like mentioning your morning scales, oh, because yeah. I saw that and I was like, you know, I'd pick a time in my day. To, to practice and try to push myself. And I was like, that has to happen first thing in the morning. At least for me, that inspired me to do that. And then um, the other was, um, uh, I was talking to a guy and he's like 70, he's been playing forever. And he sets his alarm two hours early every day and goes online and learns songs oh, on wow. YouTube. Like still like pushing himself, you know. So, so I I like to. Yeah, I'm 58, so I like to talk about like the age thing sometimes to to younger kids. It's like it's a long road and it's really an exciting road. Yeah, to totally. just keep learning and trying to figure out ways to plug in your music, whether you're building instruments. Well, like you said, amps, you're, like, you're, you know, different Motley, Motley's done, and then now you got the new band going. Yeah. No, I'm saying you're not quitting. No, you know what I mean. And it's just like. No, I mean, look, well, look at Robert Plant. We were just talking about that. Robert Plant's got a new record out. He doesn't have to do anything. No, he doesn't have. No, if to he do wanted anything. to, I mean, like, if he wanted to, he could be gardening. Yeah, for the rest of his days, and or yeah. just doing a like singing like an while athlete he's gardening. Or, or like an athlete or whatever. Like, yeah, I used to play. Yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah. I don't do that anymore. But you know, but the whole thing is, he has his buddies. They make records. Yeah, and he loves touring still, and he loves, you know, me and Barbara Ann, We go out. We have our Robert Plant date nights all the time. So whenever he's around town or we're just going to fly out, I think we're going to try and go see him over in Ireland right now. But uh, it, it's great. I don't know, I'm just saying, because he, he is truly playing just because he's I, a I lifer that. and he loves it. Uh, I feel that. I've seen him solo a few times and I was like, his, his heart's in it. Oh, well, look at Elton John. Elton, I just saw Elton not too long ago out yeah. in Vegas and he never stops working, man. No, never. No, Never. and I mean, <laughs> and that's not about the money anymore because that guy's he's made so much. No, so he because it, it a lot it of people way, talk about the with money, the band and the crew that he rolls with, and all and his buddies. They're his, his friends, friends, and he loves family. hanging out with them, and he loves yeah. jamming with them. Yeah. So it's it, look at the Stones. 
I mean, you know how Keith would always say, they'd go to Keith, when are you guys going to retire? He goes, retire from what? From what like, I from, love? Yeah, from what I love doing. He goes, yeah, I like having, you know, call through my wife in the morning, and, I'm, and then right after that, I'm on stage playing at Dodger Stadium. You know what I mean? So, like, why do I want to cut that out? Yeah. You know, he, he digs it all. But, I mean, as far as the morning scales go, I always get mine out in the morning as well because... The rest of the day is just packed with anal bleaching, shaving my legs, and getting ready for the big rock show. There's a lot of production that do goes you, Do you shave it, like... Because, <clears throat> like, I think that today, being adventurous men that we are, I don't think just a straight shave's, like, necessary. I think that's kind of been there, done that. You, like, stripes. Well, I enjoy you doing, can, I enjoy you doing shave deadlifts. your legs to match your guitars. Oh. You could do that as well, but I I enjoy deadlifting, and just so no hair grows on my shins or my knees or the rest of my legs, where the bar just rips the flesh right off. Yes, it does. And so it really saves on razor blades, <laughs> and you're getting some exercise in as well. But uh, <laughs> who know, who, where are we going? We don't know. We but, don't care. But these are the We're other things that ship. being a musician that people don't put into account. You know. <laughs> That, you know, that's all great and everything, learning your scales and songs. But there's other things that come There's other stuff in life? <laughs> <laughs> These are things they don't teach at MI. <laughs> I've been off the road for... Maybe there's a reason For, for why. a year now, the longest I've ever been off the road. And I remember I was like, I was in the kitchen, I was like digging through stuff, and I was like frustrated. And I come out with the scissors. And my wife, I go, there they are. And she goes, they've always been there. And I go, she goes, how does it feel to be in the house that you paid for? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh, well, that the, is the vacation. There is other stuff in life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that would always be great whenever, you know, Bob would just say, we should go on vacation. When you get home, I go, this is the This vacation. is my vacation. <laughs> this is Not vacation. being in a hotel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, that is the vacation when you're actually home. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, no, without a doubt. But, uh, but you know, but like you said, I mean, torn and everything, like, like you said, but but 6 a.m. when you guys get back out on the road again, yeah, you love doing it anyways, yeah, you know, so yeah, like we were talking about it before. I'm on, I'm on the road all the time, but I, I love doing it, I wouldn't trade it for anything, yeah. How do you balance family, kids, touring because it is a balance, um. Well, you know, when I come home, they're, they're like, Uncle Frank, it's good to see you. <laughs> it's me. It's dad, dad. I'm your, I'm your dad. Remember, I did everything for you. I'm and they grateful. just go, did you bring us anything? <laughs> I just, you know. Where but, were you no, for I the last year, Dad? I mean, Uncle Frank. <laughs> exactly. You look just like the other Uncle Frank that's sleeping in bed with Mom. That's a uh, Once again, I pay for that as well. Just as long as she's smiling. God oh, you have to it. pay her for that. <laughs> yes, I have to pay for well, that. Well, you know, well. we're not the best looking the long guys. Guy, I got to pay too. The pool guy, you know. Yeah, my mind, I got to pay the pool guy and then I got to pay for shoes. I guess there's these <laughs> shoes with red things underneath them. They're sh it's, if you see the red I just, But I always warning. notice with the long guy or the pool guy, these are awfully good looking dudes. That oh, oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> hey! What's this? <laughs> What's going on? Right. Hey, I'll come over here. So why don't we uh, why don't we throw down some some riffs? Yeah. Oh, I'm just this cable's gonna be working. Cut now. <laughs> it's been working all the time. It'll stop now. Thanks, bud. Cheers, man. Anytime. Thanks for having me on again. Thanks. Okay.